Hi, this is Pratik. I'm here in front of the, at the National Mall in Washington. Um, you can probably see the Lincoln Memorial behind me. And um, as we were walking around here, I was thinking about uh, why is it that the, the, the government, the country, has these uh, national memorials? Why do they spend so much time and energy and upkeep in, in having these? What purpose do they serve? And um, it occurred to me as I was looking around, there's a pretty big crowd here. Um, there's a very diverse group of Americans around here. I, there, there are some tourists, but they're, you can tell they're predominantly Americans. And, um, and I guess that that is part of the point. The idea of these monuments is to create some kind of fixture or symbols of things that uh, all Americans, regardless of where they're from, who they are, can identify with and feel like they are part of some community or some cause uh, uh, that is greater than their own individualism or their own community. Um, now, I think that this kind of uh, civic religion that these monuments and so forth cultivate are part of why the U.S. has basically succeeded as a multi-ethnic, uh, multicultural society, because there's an, a larger national narrative that people uh, feel like they're part of. Um, so that's the good thing, that's the positive thing, and I think it's a big reason why the U.S., uh, with a high degree of diversity, has managed to remain a coherent, uh, stable, thriving society, while the same level of diversity has uh, not uh, borne out well for other societies. Um, the critique I would offer, though, of these uh, large, expensive uh, monuments and so forth is that I think it it has a way of uh, creating a national narrative that is very much political. And I would argue that in emphasizing the politics, what it, it downplays or does not pay enough attention to is the fact that I, I would say an even bigger driver of what keeps the country together is economics and, and economic shared interests. And the problem is if you look at the individuals, uh, and they are mostly individuals who get these big monuments, um, I would say the thing that they have in common is that they, in some important way, expanded uh, the scope of government, uh, changed the nature and relationship of Americans to their government in ways that created more government involvement, government dependency. Uh, uh, Lincoln, of course, embodies that a great deal, which is why he remains so controversial among libertarians and so forth. He, he just fundamentally expanded the government, changed the scope of it. And, um, and I think that the more the, what these monuments do is they create a sort of consensus. They, they close off debate um, and, and just create kind of a narrative and a recognition that the government, the state, uh, is a big part of what makes the country dynamic, unified, and so forth. Um, when in fact there are a lot of other things behind it. And, and I think that one of the things that these monuments do is they normalize uh, an American's mind. Uh, the idea that government should have a large overarching role uh, in their lives. Um, so my uh, hunch here would be that although I enjoy being here, I think they look nice and so forth, that insofar as other monuments uh, develop and spring forth, I think number one, they should be happening largely through private uh, initiatives, uh, private people coming together. And second, my hope would be that rather than focusing too much on individuals, and especially individuals who had a large political role in the country, that they would be more uh, monuments to ideas um, and to uh, 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 small l liberal ideas that have more to do with a celebration of individualism and free markets and uh, non-political things that uh, make the country dynamic the way it is.